Hi, sweeties. How are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sim. If this is your first time of coming across this channel, stick hard, kindly smash the subscribe button, turn on the notification. So you get notified each time I upload and please give this video a thumb up. I appreciate you all and I want to say a very big shout out to every one of you for all the support, all the love. I am grateful. You all are super awesome. Thank you so much. So this is actually an update from Raphael, the young boy, 16 years old young boy who was shot in the head by a white man. So right now, as we speak, this man has been bailed and he is free and moving around. And I am asking, why? Why exactly? And slowly, slowly, they are bringing back Slay and Bree. They are bringing back Lynn and Shane. This was attempted murder. And he's out there already. And you know what? Interview were conducted. His grandson said that his uh his grandfather is a ray and sis and the wife also made said some certain things also about him and the man the man went to court and was acting all fragile and like he can't do anything i mean somebody that shot the first one in the head came out again the second time attempted murder and this young this old man right now is out there moving free on bail I just don't get it. Set this to the screen. Let me roll this clip. I will come back to talk about it. And I absolutely want to read all your comments. Let me know what you all think in the comment section. So straight up, let me roll the clip. He was a huge Trump supporter. And between that and then the, the galvanizing that people have been feeling lately with uh, politicians and ideologues co-signing you know, violence and domestic violence, uh, domestic terrorism and even pardoning people who murder other people for differing political beliefs. Uh, I feel like all that stuff has really ramped up his, um, his beliefs and radicalized him, radicalized him a little bit. What was your reaction when you heard that your grandfather shot Ralph Yarl for ringing his doorbell? Uh, I was disgusted. I thought it was terrible. Uh, we, my, myself and my family stand with Ralph Yarl and seeking justice. It's a, uh, this is a horrible tragedy. It never should have happened. Folks are going to want to know, why are you speaking out and apparently against your grandfather? Uh, it's the right thing to do. Um, this country happens over and over again where people get away with killing unarmed innocent black people. And it's a, I would have had the same energy for any other case like I've had over and over again in this country, like I said. But so it's the right thing to do. Uh, people need to speak out and not make any excuses for this kind of behavior and this uh, violence. So you said for killing innocent black people, the prosecutor in this case has suggested that there was a racial component to it. Do you believe your grandfather is racist? Uh, I believe he holds, holds racist tendencies and beliefs. Why do you say that? Uh, he's just a stock American Christian male. It's uh, older, you know, that's just how they are. It's uh, the conspiracies and weird random racist things and they say yeah, so, and it doesn't make sense but they're just scared now listen you're generalizing uh, a lot here about you said older christian white males <laughs> but what do you mean by that what do you mean they're scared talk to me more please uh yeah it's just uh i feel like a lot of people of that generation are caught up in this uh 24-hour news cycle of fear and paranoia perpetuated by some other news stations and he was fully into that sit and watch uh, fox news all day every day blaring in his living room and i think that stuff really kind of reinforces this negative view of, of minority groups and leads people to be a little this doesn't necessarily lead people to be racist but it reinforces and galvanizes racist people and their beliefs has he always been this way or is this something new um i feel like he's been pretty conservative for a long time, which is fine, and but and feel like feel like in the last five or six years, it's really ramped up. Uh, he was a huge Trump supporter, and between that and then the, the galvanizing that people have been feeling lately with uh, politicians and ideologues co-signing, you know, violence and domestic violence, 
of domestic terrorism and even pardoning people who murder other people for differing political beliefs. Uh, I feel like all that stuff has really ramped up his um, his beliefs that radicalized him. Disturbing new details are emerging about the elderly man accused of shooting a black teenager who rang his doorbell by mistake. Andrew Lester's ex-wife says he was prone to fits of rage, smashing objects in their home when he was angry. Mary Clayton was married to Lester for 14 years and had three children with him. She says he had a history of violent behavior. And when she called the police, they told her he could do what he liked in his own house. She now lives in California and hasn't spoken to the retired airline mechanic for decades. I was always scared of him. It doesn't surprise me what happened. And Lester's grandson, Clint Ludwig, is adding to the chilling profile. He He's told CNN's Don American Lemon today that the 84-year-old expressed racist views and became obsessed with far-right conspiracy theories, including QAnon. I would push back on some of this stuff, and he couldn't handle being pushed back on. And at a certain point, we kind of lost touch. Lester kept an arsenal of weapons and fitted his home with surveillance cameras, despite living in a low crime neighborhood of Kansas City. The guns were all over. They were, he had them stashed in some spots and had a big locker full of them. And, but yeah, he was uh, ready to defend his home, as he would say. The accused shooter's grandson spoke directly to Ralph Yarl, who is recovering from his head wounds. Proud of you, Ralph. Um, I'm so sorry this happened to you. I am. Um, I understand you're an amazing kid, and I think you're going to grow up to be an amazing man, and my family stands with you. Lester has pled not guilty and is free on $200,000 bail. Not guilty, and he's been granted bail. He is moving around. He's going to be moving around. And Raphael is still recovering, and I am asking myself what kind of justice system is going, like what is going on, because I am disgusted. Somebody that shot somebody, like, attempted mur murder and is free. Oh, dear. Anyway, sister, go to the screen, let me roll the stitches, and then we'll come back to talk about it and let me know what you all think. So here we go. I'm obsessed with far-right conspiracy theories, including QAnon. About push. He's free. He's free on $200,000 bail. Disturbing new details are emerging about the elderly man accused of shooting a black teenager. I stitched y'all to show y'all that same white man that walked in their courtroom are the same kind of men that are making our laws right now as we speak. And nobody's taking it serious for real. I mean, yes, we do have some of our community that takes it serious, but not everybody takes stuff like this serious. Your children are in danger, okay? Our children are in danger. The world is in danger because everybody on Congress has the same kind of mindset that this man has right here. Everyone on Congress wants to bring slavery back so they can have the right to do any and everything to us, okay? And when I say slavery, I'm not just talking about black people. I'm talking about if you are born with ovaries, you are a target. Black, white, Asian, Puerto Rican, it doesn't matter. You're a target, okay? And if you are under the age of 18 years old, you are a target, okay? And really... No one is safe, but I'm not even going to say white males, upper class white males are the only people that are safe. Okay. Upper class white females. If y'all don't submit to these upper class white men, you will be put in a category of the women and the children they are going after. You are not safe. We need to stay together because if we don't, okay, divide and conquer that's what they've been doing this whole time it's time for us to unite it's time for us to take a stand i don't know about you but i would love to go outside and not worry about catching a bullet because of the color of my skin or because of my gender okay you have no idea no idea what is coming 
no idea. And I hope you, I hope you do your research and you prepare. We need to get some type of group together. I keep hearing about this free energy society. Where are you guys? You said 2023. It's 2023. Where are you at? We've been waiting for you since 2019. Okay. Black Panthers, y'all need to get fucking active. All these gangbangers and all these thugs, we need y'all to do y'all job and protect y'all community like y'all was supposed to originally be created for. You wasn't originally created to beef with each other, okay? You were originally created to tech, protect us from our government, and we need you to do that now. We need you to stand today, okay? Thanks. Lester has pled not guilty and is free on $200,000 bail. Please explain to me how that makes any sense whatsoever. So everyone is in agreement, including his own family members, that he was, quote, prone to fits of rage and that he had been covering his home in a very safe neighborhood with video security cameras and with guns, like so many guns, it was making his family uncomfortable. They were like, you're in a safe neighborhood. There's literally no reason for you to have all these because they even admit he basically had a defend my home murder fantasy. We talked about this yesterday that a lot of Republicans have this weird murder fantasy now. His family admits he was drinking the QAnon Kool-Aid and that he was basically brainwashed into all the nonsense that the super Trumpers think. Why the hell would you put this man out on bail and let him be out in the general public? This was not one of those crimes of passion where it's like if you weren't his wife or you weren't whoever the subject was, then, you know, you don't have to worry about anything. He was after a certain person. He wasn't. He just tried to blow the head off of a person who rang his doorbell. How is he safe to be out right now? He could easily just do the same thing to someone else. And if he does, it's on the court's head now. This is not someone, I don't care what his age or health status is, who should have been let out on bail. And for anyone who wonders like, well, how can they keep him in jail if he's like a disabled old man? There are jails for disabled people. He easily could have his health needs met and still be somewhere that is safe for the general public. What in the world? Disturbing new details are emerging about the elderly man accused of shooting a black teenager. So, <laughs> he walking in the court acting like he can't even hardly move with his little cane, but he had enough strength to shoot this 16 year old in the head, come outside and shoot him again. I bet you he ain't have no cane when he was holding that gun. Like, I'm so tired of y'all playing this, oh, he the victim, oh, he was so scared, oh, he's so fragile. He is not a fragile old man. He knew exactly what he was doing, and he should be charged with attempted murder, not no felony of no gun charge or no other dumb stuff. He tried to kill that young black man. I said what I said. I don't care what nobody got to say behind it, but he is not fragile. He is not... uh the victim he is the problem and he need to be handled as such ah so this is all we got from the stitches and i absolutely want to know what you think about this for me i am really very mad because this is attempted murder not even how did he how like now let me tell you something you know people's lives are in danger and this could happen to anybody. It could be anybody. And this man is free out there moving around. And the court granted him bail. For what reason? Man, what the hell is going on? This is all I got for now for you all. Thank you all for all your support. See you all in my next video. Bye for now.